about to start, could we please place our cell phones on silent or vibrate mode so that they don't go off during the service? On to. If you have so done, if you have done so, you can say amen. Amen, or cell phones are off. My name is Eniola Davis. I'll be your officiating minister for this morning's Thanksgiving service for the life of Lassels Brown. As we're As we prepare our hearts and minds to hear the tributes, we will f the first two tributes stated on the program, the Carmel Boger, Boger and uh, Marcia Brown, those will be audios, then the others will be in-house, amen? And so we... Let us pray and then we can go into. Father, even now in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise for who you are. Giver of life, conqueror of death. You are with us in every time of mourning. Will the congregation please rise? Will the congregation please rise? Holy Spirit of God, we just ask even now that you bless our hearts and minds. And as we enter into this service, Lord, we ask that your manifested presence will touch hearts and minds and lives and cause us always, Father, to feel that presence. But now, this morning, we ask that you be pillow and you be pillar, that you be the comforter that we know you've always been. Death has created a void, and in the creating of that void, a loved one is missing. And so, God, we ask that you cause us to be patient with each other. Cause my wishers and supporters to be, remain strong for those whom they support. And give to Father the mourners the mindset that they will not weep forever. For we do not weep as men without hope. But we weep understanding that there is a God that delivers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. On behalf of Good morning. On behalf of my siblings, thank you all for being here to join us in celebrating the life of our beloved brother Lascelles Denton Brown. I'm Carmel Boger, Lascelles Eldest sister, Lascelles is my youngest brother. It is indeed an honor to pay him tribute. Lascelles was a man of exuberant spirit. He was articulate, widely read, had broad interests, and was full of life. Our conversations ran the gamut. Current, local, and international affairs, sports, politics, family history, etc. He fervently defended his point of view, but respected others if they differed. Beneath that tough exterior, he was a gentle, sensitive soul. He was generous to a fault and was always willing to share even his last dollar. Among his hobbies was cooking, and his favorite masterpiece was our deceased mom's chicken recipe. He was loyal to his family and friends and appreciated their loyalty in return. Lascelles' resounding, contagious laughter was memorable and will be sorely missed. While my reminiscence of the positive and pleasant memories of Lascelles could go on, 
I will just share with you a telephone conversation I had with him from Rome a few months ago where my husband Ernest had an accident and was hospitalized while we were visiting Italy. After expressing his love and support, Lascelles explained that his finances was a little low, but he offered to send me a few dollars to help with medical expenses so far away from home, the United States. I thanked and assured him that we were okay and that it would not be necessary for him to send us any money. This was indeed a demonstration of Lascelles' unconditional loyalty and generosity, even in the face of meager finances at the time. As Ron Tranmer so eloquently states, our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same, but as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Rest in peace, my dear brother Lass. We love you and will miss you dearly. You will remain in our hearts forever. Thank you all for your presence here today and your support and love during this time of bereavement. My brother Lascelles, Lass, as I lovingly called him. There are so many beautiful memories of Lascelles. So many beautiful memories that I have cherished of my brother Lascelles. I follow Lascelles. Lascelles Lascelles was the sixth child and I'm the seventh. And so therefore it's like Lascelles and Patsy. Lascelles and Patsy and Patsy. Lascelles and I, I of, uh, since his death, I sit down so many times and think of the conversations that he and I had. Beautiful conversations. Sometimes a little, you know, didn't take, he didn't take it too well, but <clears throat> he would come back. After he settled down, he would come back and we would be back on good stead. <clears throat> but the beautiful conversations we would have, I can hear his voice right now. He would call me and he would say, hey girl, how you doing? And in ending, he always said, all right, babes, take good care, enjoy the day. Or when I call him and we would, uh, you know, talk for however long, he always ended the conversation, you made my day. Have a wonderful day, sister. All right, babes. The tone of voice that he would say that with it, it, it just thinking about it now, it would just melt my heart. He was such a beautiful person, such a beautiful heart. He gave so much of himself, so much of himself. He always wanted to make that people make sure that people around him were always happy, feel good, always wanting to have a good time. I can remember, give you such an instance of his beauty, of the beautiful heart he had. My mother, or our mother, Mama, who passed a few years ago, she told me that, you know, during the, the course of any day, she would you know, after all the busy, after she would do all her stuff in the mornings, she would sit for a few hours during the course of the day and sit and relax at a particular spot on the veranda. Lassels would be home and, you know, he would get up and he would be, you know, walk around. And if he went to that particular spot where she would normally sit, 
and he didn't see her, he would hunt around the house until he found her. And if he found her in bed at that time, which was very unusual for her to be in bed, he would stop by and he would say, Mama, what happened? Why are you in bed now? And she said, nothing, man, nothing not happened. We just, she said, no, Mama, something wrong. Because you're, you should, you, you, normally you wouldn't be in bed now. What happened? You're not feeling well? And she said, no. She said, truthful, I'm not feeling so good. So I'm just lying here. And she said he would disappear. And within a, a short time, he would be back with either a cup of tea on a tray. Or he go whip up a, 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 a quick chicken soup. Whichever one he thinks would, would be the remedy for her, for whatever she described of her feelings at the time. And he would bring it on a tray, on a tray, nicely fixed on a tray. And he would sit there with her. She would sit up and he would sit there with her until she was finished. And he would take the tray from her and that's it. And as long as she would lie in that bed, he would come back periodically to check on her. When I think of that, it just melts my heart. She said, Patsy, he was the one who I could depend on to come and check on me, to do that for me. And that, that just shows you the beauty of the heart he had. I says, was so giving of himself. <laughs> And the thing about it is that he always wanted, he always thinks that he found a problem actually when it was not reciprocated. He would, he, he would be so kind to people and he thinks that people should do the same back to him. So whenever it was not reciprocated, he would be so upset, you know, and can't understand why someone would not be as kind. So many times he would come to me with, that kind of a scenario, and I would have to say to him, let's calm down and just grow to understand. That is not all the time you give it, you're going to get it back. You know, that's the kind of world that Lascelles lived in. He thought that it was a beautiful world where everybody should just live in peace and harmony and just love. Lascelles had such a beautiful heart. I cannot, I cannot get into how beautiful his heart was. That's my biggest thing with Lascelles, kind. Consider it. Always wanting to know that someone else is is if you're you know is 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 feeling okay. Always always wanting to attend to someone's feelings. Always wanting everyone to have a good time. Good time. And Lascelles, with that kind of a heart, I know that you are resting peacefully in the arms of God. Yes, you are. That heart was so beautiful, so beautiful. On behalf of my family and my siblings, I wish to express our profound sense of bereavement and loss at the passing of Lascelles Brown. We call him by his middle name, Denton. Denton and I were very close. And I must say, the closest friend I've ever had. In fact, he was my cousin, <coughs> close friend, and close associate. As little boys 
growing up, we used to play our table tennis, our version of cricket, football, and sometimes a little bit of mischief, taking out Mars on his bicycle to ride to Worthy Park or by the pavilion and hope that we would not be seen. We had a lot of fun. In those days, my only friends in Lordersville were Mrs. Brown's boys, Gibbs, Glenmuir, Norman, Ray, and Denton. Because Mama and Papa didn't believe in us having friends with persons who they don't know and whose parents they don't relate to. So you'll understand that we are a close-knit group of people. Every one of us left Lordersville to pursue high school education. But I was older than Denton, so he was left back in Lordersville while I went to school at Dintil. And he came to Dintil at the year, same year I was graduating from Dintil. That was in 1972. So can you imagine, my friend is a grub man, a first year man at Dintil. And I am a first year man, a grub man at JSA, the Jamaica School of Agriculture. I would take time out, however, from the Jamaica School of Agriculture, grub as I was, to go to Dintil to protect Denton from ragging. And I remember sometime Denton would come and point out a senior man. In those days, the first year man is a grub, the second year man is a hog man. You sound like you're a Dintil man. Fact and nonverbal. <laughs> So he pointed out a hogman and said, this hogman was less than kind, and I had to put the hogman in his place. And when others saw the hogman being put in place, then of course, you know, they back off from Denton a bit. <coughs> Denton was a good, was very good at mathematics. And it followed that at Dintil, he specialized in engineering. Though he pursued a career in accounting. Denton and I, we separated for about six or so years when we were not very close to one another. And that was occasioned by my sojourn in Montreal, my academic sojourn in Montreal. But when I visited Jamaica in the summertime, we would link up. And sometimes we used to meet at a place. He was at Cable and Wireless place doing some technician work. And we normally meet somewhere in Marcus Garvey Drive. And we normally meet on a Friday evening, you know, I doing holiday job, doing a little part-time teaching at the School of Agriculture. And then he would meet on a Friday evening and have all kind of fun. The years passed when I finally got back from school in Montreal. We hooked up again and we recruited, not really recruited, but we rejoined Donovan Hamilton. And we really had good time and youthful entertainment. I remember there was a, a particular Christmas season when Denton, myself, and Donovan were looking for Christmas parties to attend. And Denton said, oh, He's invited to a Christmas party somewhere in Red Hills Gardens. So Denton, as usual, he rented a car. And we drove with Denton. Denton, we stopped at various places. And we realized, uh, was he ever invited to a party? We stopped at a particular place. And then Denton drive up faster. Then we saw some cars at a particular gate. 
And Denton came out of the car and said, this is it. And we all went out. When we passed the gate, the owner of the house came out and said, may I help you? <laughs> then they said, oh, oh, wrong address, please. <laughs> we said, Denton, what is this? Denton is looking for party to crash. But in those days, we could do that and get away with it. We don't try that now, though. <clears throat> the Cigarette Company of Jamaica was where he provided good accounting services for several years. And he perfected his craft in accountancy. After parting ways with the Cigarette Company, he provided accounting services at the Electoral Office of Jamaica at the St. Andrew West Rural Constituency Office when I was the returning officer there. And then he went to provide services at Daryl Vaz and Donald Panton's used car company. In those days, used car wasn't as popular as they are now, so you must understand the kind of man Denton was for them to ask him to do that kind of work for them. And then I recruited him to join me at the Bureau of Standards to serve as my senior, to work as a senior auditor in the accounts department. Sorry, in the audit department. And I'll tell you, Denton is a man who took his work seriously. Some one Monday morning, the president of the staff association came and said, look, boss, that man, Mr. Brown, he's going to mash up this place. He said, what is the matter? Since Mr. Brown's arrival here, sir, everybody is on edge. When I investigated what was wrong, Denton ordered all recipients of duty concessions from government to bring their cars and park in the parking lot for him to inspect their documents to see that they are the ones around it. <laughs> if that was happening in the House of Parliament, my friend Darimper wouldn't have been the problem she's in now. <laughs> Denton is also adept at and fascinated by current affairs and international politics. No day could pass when Denton doesn't have a, new, a newspaper with new news. If you see him walking anywhere, Denton has his paper folded and he has one in his hand. When Denton is ready to take you on in world politics, you wonder who elected him as prime minister of some of these countries that he's so passionate about. I can always, I, I could, I could wonder what would happen now in these days of what's happening in the Middle East, how Denton would be activated and highly opinionated as to the cause and when it should be finished and all those things. Very adept at foreign affairs. He was a kind and generous man, and sometimes I want to think that his generosity knew no boundary. He inspired and part finance training and development of a couple of persons over many years for them to get themselves ready for startup jobs. I didn't like that too much. And I would counsel him and say, Denton, no, don't do these things. But as the old people say, from north to south, from east to west, each man knows his business best. So he knows what he was doing. And you know, I respected that. He took pride, pride in the manner in how he dresses. 
and his appearance most of the time with newspaper folded in his hand. And he's a well-spoken man. Have you ever given? You didn't know that about Denton. He's a well-spoken gentleman. Whenever you meet Denton for the first time, this is a professor in front of you. He went to Dintil, so he had to be well-spoken. <laughs> Denton wanted to have a foray in agriculture at some time to produce chicken and also pork at another time. But he never started, but we did all the planning work and only to reach a point of execution. And I want to tell you that while Denton and I had our fun around and connecting and talking about various things, and to bring back the matter of his generosity, Denton would say, Omar, mom cooking some gooseneck soup today. That is Saturday. You're coming? I said, no, man, I can't make it. I'm busy. He said, no, man, I tell mom already. And she's expecting you. No, the fact that Mrs. Brown is expecting me, I can't. This is a point I have to go. I said, Denton, you blackmail me, but so is life. So I said, Denton, next time give me about two days' notice, no man. Denton said, Look, man, you must stop eating dry bun and cheese <laughs> and come eat some good food. <laughs> so we make sure. That Mrs. Brown always looked forward to me coming on a Saturday. And Denton looked forward to taking me there on a Saturday to eat some of the gooseneck. And I think I learned that the dry bun and cheese is not helping. Hmm? But the gooseneck soup is what brought me here, have me here now. <laughs> My children refer to Denton as the tall man. Oh, little children, Denton is tall. They were very fond of him. Whenever he would, you know, on a weekend, he'd rent his car and he drives by and he'd come and say hello and, you know, the children run out and hug him and he's down by his knee, you know. So he's a guy who is very affable. In Denton, we found and we knew a good friend, a wonderful person. He's a very calm guy with great wisdom, who had a friendly personality and a captivating sense of humor. I see Peach is here, one of our friends for many years, and she will tell you how Denton's sense of humor is. In him we know a man who pays a lot of attention to details. We knew a man who had a calm character and most times, an even temperament. Because if you play the fool, then time will put you in a place. We knew a man who was adept at current affairs. Respectful and respectable. We knew a very honest and unselfish and a trustworthy man. We the friends of Denton extend our condolences to all the members of his family and we wish for his soul to be to find eternal peace and rest at a place where the light will perpetually shine upon him what good my brother my friend Uh, good day, everybody. I have a tribute to make to, you know, the, well, it's really a tribute to the late Lassen, Mr. Lassens Brown. It's, it's part, as a former co-worker, 
I'll briefly go to it. But I noticed that the gentleman who spoke before seemed to have had a peep at my thing. I don't know how he got it. <laughs> Anyhow, I remember Mr. Lassell Brown as a brilliant young gentleman of above average height joining Cigarette Company of Jamaica Limited in the Finance and Accounts Department. He was a punctual employee, very pleasant and respectful. Part of Lassell's overall efficiency and effectiveness included his speed in completing job assignments. On observing how he processed loads of documents, it appeared to onlookers that he had eyes in his fingertips as he turned his head away from the keyboard of his calculator while focusing on the respective documents. It was fun to observe that as he rechecked for accuracy, he seemed to be always satisfied. His social skills were very admirable. His lightning speed of solving crossword puzzles in his spare time his command of the English language in conversations and discussions and on a variety of subjects. He enjoyed table games, drafts, which some people call checkers, dominoes, and chess. He loved table tennis. One cannot forget his unique and dignified laughter. His mannerisms in general reflected proper upbringing at home, school, and socially. He was a very bright star. May his soul rest in peace. Okay. We'll have the remembrance. Andrew, where's the symbol? Glenn, Sir Glenn will be coming. <laughs> this is a little difficult. You know, um, the last time I was here, um, was my dad. Last time I came to Jamaica was on my dad's passing. The time before that was my mom's passing. And here I am again, you know, with my brother's passing. Um, friends, family, well wishes here in Jamaica and those live streaming here and abroad. Let me first of all just say a special thank you to everybody who is here. Thank you for taking the time um, to celebrate with us uh, at this moment. Um, we don't take your presence here lightly. We, we certainly do appreciate your being here with us. It gives us strength. We are here today to celebrate the life of our dear brother and uncle friend, a mentor, and truly an extraordinary person. Lassells Denton Brown was born on March 2, 1959, in Loidesville, a little district somewhere in St. Catherine. He was a sixth of eight siblings. There's Carmel, who you saw earlier on. There's also Marcy, who we also saw doing a tribute earlier on. Um, and this Calverton, um, Ray, um, who is not here this morning, Ray is fighting an illness and could not be here today. And then there is Norman, and there is my little sister, Andrew. And of course, I'm Glenmore, uh, somewhere at large about number three in the rank. Um, and then, of course, we have lost Lascelles, who was the sixth child. 
Our dear brother was both tall and handsome, possessed a heart that was even more remarkable. He was a proud alumnus of Dental Technical High School, as was referred, um, mentioned earlier on by Omer. Um, and he left Dintel and spent most of his working life at Cigarette Company as an accountant. His diligence, his dedication, and attention to details were qualities that shone brightly throughout his professional life. But it was, it was his exceptional qualities beyond the workplace that truly defined him. He had a deep and abiding love for children showering them with kindness, warmth, and endless laughter. He had a unique ability to connect with them on a level that was simply magical. Here is how a few members of the family remembered him, and Calverton will, will share that with us. Firstly, is Neville Dermar. My uncle was a larger-than-life personality with a big heart and was generous with his time and energy. At his core, he was a cultured man with strong principles and went out of his way to make you feel important. Christopher, another nephew. Uncle Lascelles was a very jovial person, always smiling and enjoying life the best way he knew it. Cherokee is mentee. She is uh, an athlete, Jamaican athlete. Today, as we bid farewell to a remarkable friend and mentor, we remember his unwavering spirit and how it inspired us. His boundless enthusiasm and unyielding support left an indelible mark on our hearts and the track we tread. His legacy of motivation and determination will forever guide us along the path he helped us for, forge. Our brother was at his best when engaged in lively, animated discussions. When the topic was on sports, um, politics, or the intricate tapestry of world affairs. You know, and I, I, I can say I've, I've been involved in many of these discussions. You know, he'd call me from, I'm in Canada, he'd call me and we would get off into a long, sometimes very loud discussions on things that he's very passionate about. You know, and I, as Omer indicated, he's very, um, Opinate, opinate, opinated, right? He, 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 he holds on to his ideas, views on something, and he will never let it go. Quite often, however, at the end of the, um, of the discussion, he will indicate that I agree with you, but, right? So he's still not letting it go. His passion, vigor, and energy were unparalleled. He made every conversation a vibrant exchange of ideas and perspectives. His generosity knew no bounds. His loyalty to friends and family was unwavering, and his spirit was ceaselessly lively. He cherished good times and created countless unforgettable moments for those lucky enough to be in his company. His curiosity about nature and the world was insatiable. He was constantly seeking new information about life, nature, and the world we inhabit, demonstrating an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. I was reminded on Sunday, sorry, let me just, I was reminded that on Sundays, Lascelles would reserve Sunday, especially for the Sunday Gleaner. As soon as the newspaper landed in Loidesville, he would be one of the first to get his copy. It seemed he read every page, 
every article before tackling the word games. Crossword puzzle was, his, was one of his favorite pastimes. As we bid farewell to our beloved brother, let us remember the love he shared, the laughter he brought, and the wisdom he imparted. His legacy for kindness, curiosity, and enthusiasm will forever inspire us. Rest in peace, Lassells. Your memory will forever be engraved in our hearts, a testament of your wonderful soul. Rest in peace, brother. The eternal God is our refuge and our fortress, and underneath are his everlasting arms. We stand. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, he brought us into a living hope. Things beyond our hearing, things beyond our seeing, and things beyond our imagining have all been prepared for those who love him. Tears may linger at nightfall, but rejoicing comes in the morning. For we all know that God's judgment is just. And do you imagine there is one here who will escape the judgment of the living God? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Lassells for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence Pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. I bless the body of our brother Lassells with holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism in his death, we were buried together with him, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, the cells was incorporated into Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Lassells. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through jesus christ our lord amen we blend our voices together in the singing of the hymn blessed assurance Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress, glory divine. <clears throat> Heirs of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. 
This is my story. This is my song. day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my sin all the day long. This is my story. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my song, praising my Savior all day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have the reading of the lesson, Psalm 19. The first reading is taken from Psalm 90, verses 1 to 6. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout our generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are our God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you swept people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. Here endeth the reading of the word of the Lord. The Lord's my shepherd. Happy wonder too. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastors green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. He lives, he I know that my Redeemer, yes, he lives. He lives within my heart. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the in for his own name's sake. I know that my Redeemer, yes, he lives. he lives. He lives within my heart. 
Yet though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill. For thou art with me, I rod and stop me comfort still. He lives, he lives. He lives. I know that my Redeemer, yes, he lives. He lives. He lives in my heart. I know that my Redeemer, yes, he lives, he lives, he lives within my heart. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore a dwelling place shall be. He lives, 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 he Our second lesson is taken from John 1, reading from 1 to 8. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and with him was not anything made that was not made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the Lord, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. So the King of heaven to his feet my tributes bring, ransom deal restored, forgiven, who like this praise to sing. Praise, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the everlasting. Praise him for his grace and favor to our fathers in distress. Praise him still the same forever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, glorious in his faithfulness. Father, like he tends and spares us, well, or feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Alleluia, alleluia, widely as his mercy flows. 
Angels help us to adore him. We behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him. Dwellers all in time and space. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise with us the God of In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh Father, that your Son Jesus Christ came to die for us. We thank you that you raised him from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who, who love you, Lord, in your mercy. May we be strengthened in our faith that we may live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son and be ready when you call us to the fullness of eternal life, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Lascelles' family. Be close to them in their loss, console them in their grief, and surround them with your undying love and grace, Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the gift of life and the life of Lasselle. Show your mercy to the dying and strengthen them with hope and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence, Lord, in your mercy. We commend all people to your unfailing love that in them your will may be fulfilled and we rejoice at the faithful witnesses of your saints in every age praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. As our Savior has taught us so we pray the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be your name. Give us today our daily bread. Give us yours. As we forgive those. Give us from time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and ever. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Lascelles and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest, that light perpetual shine upon them. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing the hymn, My God, Nearer My God. Nearer my God to thee. 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 
cross that raised me. We know it. Still, all my song shall be. us pray. God of, God of grace and truth, we give you thanks and we give you praise for that which your people have given. Holy Spirit of God, we ask even now that you bless them in return. Full measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. 
We only ask the Holy Spirit that you take full charge now. And Father, as we reflect on you, as we're about to reflect on your word, we pray and ask even now that God, you will cause us to draw strength and meaning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'll only take five minutes of your time before we go into the commendation. We're, we're, we're very mindful that the rains have, fought, have been falling. And it seems by the weather report they will continue to, to fall. Uh, we're not complaining about the water. We're just mindful of what the water will do to some of the roads. Amen? It's better to have a full tank. I spent two years in Westmoreland serving in Lambs River. And, and I learned it's better to get heavy rains in the road mash up and have a full tank of water than the roads paved. No road or mash up, the place dry and the tank dry. Amen? You have to choose betwixt the, the two. You can't have it uh, both ways. Amen? There, as, as I heard the, the, the reading of Psalm 90, it triggered something in my mind. Uh, as, as a teenage boy, I found myself in a quandary, not being able to choose what to do with the rest of my life. You know, when you in high school, they, they tell you that you'd have to choose. You have to choose a set of subjects. You're going into fourth form or you're going into third form. And those set of subjects that you're going to focus on for the next couple of years are going to pave the path for what is it you want to do. And so I was one of them students who, the French teacher had already spoken to my father and told my father he is not interested in French. So I know that all the rest of fanciful things that were happen was never going to be mine. And so I sat in front of the third form block with a pen, with a pencil in my hand and my pen, and having this long sheet to fill up as a teenager, not knowing what to write on it. And knowing that in that moment, only you alone can fill it out. Your mother can't fill it out for you. Your father can't fill it out for you. Nobody can't fill it out for you. You alone are going to have to make this decision. And it's going to be based on what you like. And administration is waiting on this form so that your form teacher can sign off. And all the other teachers will sign off to see if you have that aptitude. And you're like, oh, God, it's just nerve-wracking. And by chance, I looked down in my pocket and I saw a pencil. I said, you know what happened? I'm going to study construction for the rest of my life. I'm going to just assign myself to the drawing room and the drafting room. And that's where I'm going to be. And so that's what I did. That's what I did. It's determined that we're going to study architecture. When I hear the words, you are our refuge and our hiding place, it's easy for one to walk into a building and to say that the building is well designed or to look at it and to have an appreciation for what is presented. The plasticity of the concrete must be manipulated so that it brings forth or it, it gives or it's able to give that ambiance that is it the client would so want. And what is it you want the building to say? Whether you want the building to give an aggressive look or you want the building to be accommodative. And you might ask, how is it you have a building looking aggressive? Have you ever seen some buildings in the first world countries that does, you stand before them and you get a different sense? A sense of seriousness comes over you? It is deliberate. In architecture, it's deliberate. The building is designed to impose and to create that feeling. That when you stand before this building, you must realize that you're in a life-changing situation. When the author says that God is our dwelling place and God is our hiding place, what are the specs that the, that the author is working with? Because the specs that the author is working with now says to each and every one of us that there's a commonality that every human being knows and understands as we come to God. The, the, the wrestling with, with that is this. 
God is primordial. God is before time and outside time. And uh, allow me to go a bit technical to get simple. And I, and I promise you, I'm not going to be long. When I say God is before time and outside time, if, if we look at the word nothing and we were to give, uh, what is it, the prefix no to thing, it means no thing. It, and hence it, me, it needs something in order to give a manifestation. And hence God is standing in the place where there is no thing in order to catapult everything else into existence. And what that does then with God is that it creates a history of the future. Because he stands in the place where there is nothing and knows everything and gives to us everything. And basically this. When we use a term and we say God is my all in all. It's how we come to God at the line where time begins and place time within eternity. And time itself becomes minuscule if we measure it linear. Difficult specs to look at. And it's difficult to look at why? Because we come to the everlasting, the great expanse of the everlasting with finite minds. Ergonomics says to us this. How many of you tested the chair before you sat on it this morning? How many of you walked inside Romans this morning and tested the chair? That's what you call trust. That's what you call what? Trust. You display the level of trust that you wouldn't understand. Because your spinal, if, you, if one of those chairs was faulty and your spinal, you fell and hit your spinal cord, or, or you broke a leg or twisted an ankle, then your physicality would have become challenged in the moment of your falling. And what it then says is this, if you can trust us that when we say to you, here's some chairs, sit, and you don't test them, then what about the great God that you're called to? In the system of things. And some people would say to us, say, Reverend, uh, this, this God that you talk about, what is, what, what is, what is this God that you speak about? And, and uh, simply put this way. I said to, said to one of my friends, I said, one of the simplest things to me that says to me that there must be a God is, how do you get a rainbow? I, I, I loved chemistry when I was going to school. And there's this thing that the t teacher does where they pass light through the crystal, and then you see the breakdown of white light. How many have ever seen the breakdown of white light? And when it breaks down, you see all the other colors that are inside white light. And so when you're looking outside on white light, you're looking at purple, you're looking at all the primary colors, you just can't see them. And that cannot be by sheer luck. It, can, it, 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 it must be by design. And what, what, what we, we, when we learned chemistry, we learned that we, we were actually looking at hypothesis. But if you are to become doctoral, you must come to laws. You must move past that which is still guess and spell. And what you learned in fifth form and in sixth form must now be proven in, in the labs of real life. Israel is saying that the, the, what the, the weapon system they have, the, the golden dome, or the dome system that they have with the rockets, uh, two days ago, they were saying that one of the rockets cost them what? $50,000 or $10,000, something like that, per rocket. Per what? Rocket. Now they have a laser system, light delivering heat, that is only going to cost them $2,000 per burst. Light delivering heat. It's almost like when they showed you the display of it last night, I said, Whoa, it looked like Star Wars. This thing just sitting there and just shooting bursts of lasers across the sky. And I'm like, Wow, the world has changed. But I close with this and asking you this Has the world really changed? Has the world really changed? 
are we seeing anything new in that invention? Because what I learned when we learned, when we were looking at physics, and we're looking at the expansion and the contraction of metals and how they behave under different temperatures. God in his design already gave us light that delivers heat. And it's called sunlight. Mankind has done nothing new in all our experiments. And all the while I say to my friends, I said, I said I'm glad I did the sciences. So, so when you come to me, I'll ask you the simple question. The day we make honey, then I know we have accomplished something great. The day human beings make what? Honey. Then we have done something. Have you ever heard any scientist say they made honey? It's still the bees making. And what that then says to me is this, is that God is still our hiding place. He's still our refuge. He who gave us the designs. He who gave us the rules and set the borders of the seas that they, can, that they cannot pass. And set the world in its flow. And all the planets in their circulation and in their courses. He's still in charge. And he does not need to manifest himself physically to say that he is God. Everything he does in his invisibility says that he exists and that he's in charge this morning i say to you regardless of what struggles you face you look at sir lasses and you hear of his meticulousness with numbers that too is a gift in itself it's a gift in itself i, I my friends will tell you this the greatest part greatest challenge in construction to me is always this when they come in the fancy designs and we're going to, have to work out the concrete i'm always looking for a grub to say you work out this it, it, grubs are important. Grubs are what? Important. You can pass certain labors to them. <laughs> In life, everybody is important. And I say to each and every one of you, always remember that. Regardless of what stage and what space you occupy, God has given to each and every one of you the task to state your own importance. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for who you are. Holy Spirit of God, it is you alone whom we can look to. It is you alone who has set the standards, the standards that continue to amaze us. And in all our creativeness, we're just trying to reflect you. We pray and ask even now that you touch Lassell's family, that you touch his brothers, his sisters, that you touch, Father, his whole family, as such as friends, those who will miss him, his cousins, nieces and nephews. And we ask now, Father, that you will bind and you will continue to wrap your hands round about them. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen and amen. We stand as we do the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant, Brother Lascelles, with your saints. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth shall we return. For you said, sorry, for you did. For you did ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us commend our brother Lascelles to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, our sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil and set him free from every bond 
that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Into thy hand, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Lascelles. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. We sing the recessional, shall we gather at the river. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels' feet have trod with its crystal tide forever from the throne of God? Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship ever for the happy golden day. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide a robe and crown. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of The smiling of the river, mirror of the Savior's face. Saints whom death will never sever, lift their songs of saving grace. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river.